Hello everyone, and welcome back to part 2 of my one pound battle bot, Mr. Roomba. And in this video I will go over how Mr. Roomba 2.5 performed in the bot bash event in 2018 with Showdown. Okay, so my first match in this event was me against Batbot. Um, I fought Batbot before, this was in 2017 at the first bot bash cup. And the first time I fought Batbot, I had some issues with the uh, weapon spinning up, but this time I actually was able to spin up with version 2.5. So let's just watch it and see what happens. Okay, so let's break it down. So the first hit I did on that bot was just pure luck because that disabled the drive on one side and that can be a major advantage. After that, after several hits, that bot tapped out. And that was the end of my first match. So my next match was against Cyclone and I gotta say right now Cyclone was terrifying because I've been to the uh, first bot bash cup and I've seen how he's fought and it's just scary. I did have a strategy though. Um, I I went over, or I, remember, I recall going over some footage, and I noticed that sometimes his belt would come off, so one of the strategies were just to keep hitting him, see if his belt gets disabled and the weapon's disabled. Um, another thing I noticed that when he gets up to a certain speed, he starts to drift a bit and have a difficulty driving. So uh, I was going to go after his wheel if, if that doesn't work. So uh, let's go over the footage. Um, I didn't record it, so all this footage is going to be from uh, the showdown stream, so credit to them. Let's see if we can live up to their name, both their names. We're ready to do this crowd, let's go. Count it down. Two, four, five. Let's see if Mr. Roomba's words are gonna go. Both of these them. robots are spinning in the same direction. We're gonna have a massive impact when they collide. And just as you said, Andy, one massive blow. Here comes the cycle with no, oh yes. There we go, Cyclone just turning right into Mr. Roomba. Mr. Roomba getting his speed up yet again, but having a little difficulty turning himself around and Yes, flashing back and forth. Mr. Roomba looking like a hockey puck out there. Now getting a solid shot on the backside of Cyclone. It looks like Cyclone inherited his wheel issues from his brother Rhino. The left side already mangled by Mr. Roomba's spinner. Unfortunate for him, he's still able to turn left and right. But unfortunately, he's unable to really land those devastating blows with any velocity. Mr. Roomba with that clean tuxedo coming in with another shot. Mr. Roomba definitely dressed to impress tonight, Mio. Uh, Mr. Roomba's strategy so far, he's just going around the blade, trying to land those wheel shots as we saw already. He sees his weak point and he's just trying to capitalize. Cyclone having issues with that drive already, however, taking a big shot, flipping over. Will that actually, it looks like it's bringing it back to life, Mio. Yeah, actually, the flip helping out Cyclone quite a bit. Mr. Roomba still backing up, trying to find an opening yet again. Yep, the mobility paying so much dividends so far. Cyclone really struggling to get anything going. And with that limp on its walk, it's looking like me after my knee surgery, Miho. I mean, unfortunately for Cyclone, he, doesn't, he has no crutches. Still trying to make this go, and we see a couple more parts just flying right now. Mr. Roomba still coming in very aggressive. However, it looks like there's a little bit of instability, but not any more unstable than Cyclone after that shot. Cyclone's blade just spinning over and over. Doesn't matter what he's hitting, but he is facing back up, but unfortunately unable to turn himself around to try to hit Mr. Roomba. Mr. Roomba possibly going in for one more hit. Yes. And that is going to be it. This fight is over. Mr. Roomba versus Cyclone. All right, so we have a unanimous decision for Mr. Roomba taking the W and moving on through this bracket. Mr. Roomba is your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's start off on what I noticed during the fight. 
So the very first thing that I noticed was that upon one of the hits, one of my impactors fell off. It was completely fine though because I just had to lower the weapon speed. Upon further inspection, I discovered that the reason the teeth came off or the impactors came off was because that uh, Cyclone's blade came in behind it. Um, this is because during the start of the match, I put Mr. Roomba upright. This caused our weapon to spin in opposite directions, and that kind of gave us, or I was hoping it would give me a bit more bounce off of its weapons, so we don't take, so I don't take that much of an impact against it. Originally, I was going to have Mr. Roomba's weapon upside down, so this would cause both of our weapons to be spinning in the same direction. I thought the impact wouldn't would be a bit too much for the ring, causing it to crack. But I'm pretty sure if I had it the other way, it would actually would have withstood the impact from the way I designed it because it's specifically designed to take the impact from the impactors into that titan titanium ring that you could see in the center of the uh, two ring sandwiches and then just dis disperse it throughout the whole ring. The second thing I discovered was that uh, towards the end of the match one side of the drive stopped working um, so back in the pits I looked into it and it looks like the uh, adapter that I created for, for putting on the peanut gearbox onto the 2206 motor actually just uh or the motor separated from the actual adapter which caused the motor to pop out i ended up fixing it by just putting a uh, super glue on it and it was a kind of a quick fix but it it held up a little bit f for the next fight speaking of the next match i was going up against dark pounder and i don't know if i need to really say anything about dark pounder but to say a lot of robots has faced them hasn't really come out in one piece. So let's get on to the footage. Unfortunately, once again, for some reason, the GoPro stopped recording or just overheated somehow. But uh, all the footage, or the last piece of footage here is from the Showdown Twitch stream, so go check them out. But I didn't really have a strategy for this match. I did know that Dark Powder was going to box rush me to uh, prevent my ring from spinning up. So I was going to attempt to uh, avoid that and just get spun up and see what happens. Three, two, one! Right, this highly anticipated match is going underway and Dark Pounder just trying to come in right away. Swinging in, coming all the way in. Oh, and Mr. Roomba getting flipped over, still flipped over. But his design looking like he is able to survive, just can't really move anywhere. Dark Pounder is so nimble and he's being so aggressive, not allowing Mr. Roomba to spin that blade up to full speed. How oh my goodness, a ceiling shot, Miho. I know, what a blow it was. Mr. Roomba trying to go ahead and clean himself up right now, but unfortunately that is not the case. Dark Pounder still keeping up all this pressure. Dark Pounder is so aggressive. Oh my goodness, another ceiling shot. No, and Dark Pounder is still not done lining up for yet another one. And it's looking like Mr. Roomba's taking some substantial a damage again. third ceiling shot. Are you kidding me, Miho? But look at this, Mr. Roomba taking all of this damage and he is still moving. Oh, we got a flip coming in. I'm not sure if that was designed or if there's just another flip going in there. Dark Pounders proving to everyone why he is the number one ranked all-time robot. This robot has been around since the early 2000s. Iterated on 11 times, but he's on his uh -oh. back. Will he be able to turn back over? He does. Yeah, Mr. Roomba unable to take advantage of that opportunity. And that's what constant design iterations do, Miho. They allow you to improve on your former robot. Maybe an older Dark Pounder would have been stuck on his back and disabled. Even after all of these blows coming off from Dark Pounder, Mr. Roomba just surviving, still able to move, but ooh, as I'm saying that, not looking like that will be too much longer. I can't believe how well built Mr. Roomba is to take this punishment from Dark Pounder. However, he is starting to come to pieces. Uh, but he slipped on his back one more time. The tuxedo still is on lock, still looking as fashionable as ever, but looking nice. And that takes is, you so it, far. That is a tap out, Miho, in the final 12 seconds. Mr. Roomba can take no more, and your winner is Dark Pounder. Okay, since I'm impatient, I already opened up Mr. Roomba. And uh, this is what it looks like after the battle with Dark Pounder. But first, I'm going to start with the ring. Okay, so the ring. Let me get the actual titanium ring. So here are the rings, and as you could tell, they took the brunt of the torture from Dark Pounder. But let me start and show you this. So this was printed with my personal printer. I had under extrusion issues, which caused 
some adhesion issues. So as you can tell, I could kind of split it if I wanted to. And that was probably why it was splintering so much. Now this ring was printed with an Ultimaker 3 that it had access to. Same nylon, just different color. And it withstood pretty well. The parts just got shattered off, which is pretty good instead of things splintering. Pretty sure this is what hindered me from moving. Or from moving as well. So yeah. Now for the titanium ring that got water jet, as you can tell, it wasn't too happy. Um one of pretty sure one of the hits from Dark Pounder. Just remove this material off and just bent it. But I'm pretty sure we're good, I'll just have to re-hammer it in or straighten it out somehow by bending it or with a hammer. And yeah, that should be good. Now let's get to the main body. Yeah, one more thing is that I was actually able to still spin up. So you could tell the inner I don't know, I guess I would call it rail. Oh. It's still it's kind of untouched, so I could still spin around it. Um, this side, I was able still to spin. This was just really weak and just peeled off like paper. Yeah. Now, here are the insides of Mr. Rimba. As you could tell, I already took out one wheel. Because this was the side that gave me a drive issue. And what the drive issue was, was that this outrunner here, uh, the screws were actually too short and they, were, they weren't actually getting into the thread. So, so one of the hits that I got was able to knock this away from the screw and actually move the motor a bit upwards. So it was technically like if I removed this one screw here, then I was able to shift this whole mo motor upwards. And that caused the motor not to be able to have any contact, or not the pinion, not to not be able to have contact with the gearbox. So I am working on a different revision of this adapter. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here's the next revision. Um, the only thing I changed was that it'll have smaller holes, so the threads get maybe more grip. Oh, the threads of the screw get more grip onto the uh, adapter here. And then also for the issue with having that runner mount to this adapter was that I'll probably just extend, I'll just get longer screws and that should fix the issue. So yeah. Now look at the frame, it actually, it withstood a lot of impacts pretty well. I do see some issues already, which I don't know if some were withstood or if some were caused by Cyclone or Dark Pounder. One thing I do know that was caused from Dark Pounder was this giant crack here. Yeah. No, this was probably f was, or sustained from getting launched into the air and probably hitting a ceiling. Probably from, I don't know, maybe a sharp edge hit here or probably just the sheer force of the impact. Just cause this whole piece to crack up. I probably won't reinforce it in my next model when I go back to redesign it. So yeah. Uh, I didn't have any electrical issues. Everything was actually still working. Uh, one thing that was interesting was that <clears throat> the epoxy here did not adhere as well. And I could take off the gear for the ring. I was fortunate enough that this did not pop out. So probably next time I'm going to sand it down even more. I still do have my spare here. I'm pretty sure this one adhered more because I actually really sanded this one down. This one was kind of rushed. So, yeah. So everything actually was pretty fine. I did get some of these things wobbly, but I had a M4 bolt holding it down so it wasn't moving at all. <clears throat> This small piece, I'm pretty sure this was a stain from Cyclone. There's a part in the video where he was just high enough to not hit anything crucial in my robot on the top, but um, his blade was able to take out one of my screws. I'm pretty sure when he hit that screw, it basically snapped off this part. So yeah, so for the next revision, I think I'm going to make better 
motor adapters. Uh, I'm gonna keep all, all electronics. I'm probably gonna reinforce this area here because I had that part crack. And we'll see how it performs in my next event. Well everyone, this is the end of the video and uh, at the time of editing this video right now, I've already competed in my next event which was RoboGames 2018 with a uh, version 3.0 with slight changes. If you want me to make a video on that one, just let me know down in the comments. There's nothing much that I've changed about the design. Um, currently right now, I'm designing version 4. Um, that one, that deserves a little update. So stay tuned if you want to see how that turns out. And this actually kind of covered part 3, so I'm going to make this part 2 slash 3. So. Everyone have a good day, and this is Team Logic 404, out.